It is Wednesday, my dudes, which usually would mean it's time for an impressions video, but in this one, let's just talk about this week's patch for February 1st, 2024, because there's some things in here that I really wanted to talk about, so, well, let's just jump into it without wasting too much time. So this week, we have the startup of the next World Arena season. This is the Oath season, and I feel... Uh, kind of weird because, well, they asked me on Orbis Overdrive the other week what character did I want an RTA skin for, and I woke up this morning and a couple of you on Discord already pointed out to me that, uh, yeah, it's Lionheart Sermius. So, uh, is Sue going to push for Legend this season? Well, it's named O Season, and it's my favorite character is the skin, so I feel like it's trying to tell me that I should make an oath to try to push for it. No promises, but... I will be streaming uh, a lot more during this season for the RTA climb, so you can at least expect that. I have three months, basically, to really decide if I want to push for it. Uh, so, yeah, we, ha we, we have time. So, it's Lionheart Sermia. And the frame is actually not terrible this time, in my opinion. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Like, this legend frame is... Mm, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I always feel like the frame is tied to the character, so maybe perhaps we'll get, like, a, a blue version of this character. Maybe it's not. I mean, the Bellion frame doesn't really match the Bellion, so I guess there's that. Ancient Inheritance revamp beta. Obviously, Tristan Wolf is going to be super excited about this because, well, he yeah, hasn't shut up about Ancient Inheritance since November. He's been waiting for it. So here we are. Um, in case you didn't notice, there are a couple of changes here to the actual system if you scroll down. So now um, you get these completion effects when you actually level up. I don't believe that these were actually there beforehand. So like now, for example, when you, uh, you, get, you get XP still the same way from interacting with things and moving around. You acquire two ancient dragon's keys. At level three, you get an additional relic. I'm uh, sorry, it's two, a uh, dragon keys at two, a relic at three. Mobility range increases by one cell at four, so on and so forth. This is the big thing that's being changed with this new Ancient Inheritance. And now you get XP based on the elements of the characters you actually already play. In the past, you would just choose classes, which like, oh, you know, I choose uh, Warrior and Ranger and so on and so forth. And... In the past, uh, it was pretty unbalanced. Uh, Thief was basically worthless. And Knight wasn't particularly great either. Like, you basically were always going uh, Warrior, Soul Weaver, and then your choice of, like, Ranger or Mage. There was some use for Knight, but it wasn't exactly the best. So we'll see how this new system pans out with the XP. Uh, Ancient Inheritance is going to last three weeks now instead of two. Uh, that's why it's called a beta. Because, uh... Things could go awry, right? You could absolutely get into a situation, I think, perhaps, where guilds will have a much tougher time clearing under this new XP system. So don't worry too much. Assuming that you actually have a guild that is moving at a somewhat decent pace, I think you will probably be able to quickly clear everything here. Uh, you see there's a checklist now that you need to actually proceed. Before, the general strategy was just get onto the floor, eliminate all the wardens, uh, and then immediately go for the boss. So now it's a little bit different. You need a little bit more coordination, which I don't know. This this sounds good on paper, but from my experience uh, from with my guild uh, in the past, it seems like not everyone's always on the same page. And the more organization you need, the worse it's going to end up being. And I don't know if that's the case for most other guilds, because again, I am only in one guild. I can only speak from our experience, but Things go kind of haphazardly, and you know that's one of the reasons why Ancient Inheritance, like we get everything, but it feels like it's a struggle to get everything from time to time. So I worry about how other newer guilds uh, or guilds with less people than mine will end up faring with the new system. Uh, this thing here, by the way, still hasn't changed. Guild members who have not participated in Ancient Inheritance before defeating a boss cannot receive the rewards. Um... Yeah, no, that's that's still kind of garbage. I wish it kind of queued it up so that if you came into Ancient Inheritance later, you end up getting those rewards. 
it's still really rough where there might be a chest near the spawn on floor one and the morning of ancient inheritance like going up somebody grabs that chest well that stuff is all lost to anyone who hasn't logged in on day one and actually started their participation i really wish they would change this this is kind of like a a big thing that a lot of us have been asking for and here we are still even in the new version and it kind of sucks you also will get uh the new health and speed set gear here you can see uh just as a general uh like you know breakdown of the gear uh the health set one is fine the attack percentage kind of throws everything off but i don't know what you would really put here instead of attack percentage the helmet is good for a character like death dealer ray uh, for example, because you want somebody who wants uh, uh, ER or effectiveness together. So if it rolls kind of a split, Death Deal Array is a pretty good candidate for this if you're wondering where it should go. The body piece is probably the, I guess, don't miss piece of the entire thing. Uh, this is a perfect tank slash Soul Weaver body. So definitely don't skip this one. This one's really, really important. I think for a lot of people, this might be one of their uh, better body pieces. Proof of Whispers, again, pretty good on somebody like Death Dealer Ray who wants a split of ER and effectiveness. Uh, Derisive Touch, which is the ring here. Same story. This one has a little bit more applications based on how it rolls because it's on the health set. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then, uh, obviously, the boot is like for DPS. So not a great set of gear overall for actual like damage dealers, DPS. But for like tanks and supports and debuffers, most of these are pretty good. I would say overall the body, in my opinion, is the best overall piece and the one that I would focus on trying to get first and foremost. Special side story, Miracle Made Kingdom. This is what they had been hinting at for a bit uh, in the uh, previous metadata mails that we talked about last week. Uh, Tamarin is looking absolutely gorgeous here. I expect her to be a potential limited hero, but I am not quite sure at this point. Because, well, I think this is a four-week event, right? This is a three- or a four-week event. Because if it's a, that can tells us quite a bit. So it's from uh, it's a three-week event. So, yeah, Tamarin might actually be a skin. But the thing is, it has new voice lines. And I don't ever actually remember a skin having voice lines outside of World Arena skins. Correct me if I'm wrong. Which leads me to believe that this character is still a limited. So, for example, if this character came out uh on the uh what is it the seventh is what she's revealed so if she's revealed on the seventh it comes out on the eighth and then tamarin is revealed on the 14th it comes out on the 15th well it's possible we've seen in the past characters like benny maru go longer than the actual event that benny maru released in so it's still possible that uh tamarin could be the limited um so you can see it's like a three week thing here week one week two week three uh, enhanced heroes, they have the question marks because they're they're trying to like downplay that uh, next week we will be talking about Laia. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. I will look into the actual pronunciation of it next week. Uh, make sure that I have it uh, all well and good. Uh, you got the side story with the planner and, and everything like you would normally expect. You get uh, the microphone here from Tamarin and they listened finally. They make these things 88. Just please keep making every piece of gear a uh, 88 or 90 going forward. Please smile gate. Uh, again, this is very similar to what I said about death deal array. Uh, this is actually now that I think about it, this is actually good for Tamarin. Now that I think about it, sweet scene music, Mike, this thing is really, really good for Tamarin because right now where most people play Tamarin is a nightmare raid and she needs high ER and effectiveness and health and speed. So this is actually like tailor made for this character. For nightmare raid so i guess good on them next we come to expedition improvements this is actually one of the biggest things if not the biggest thing that i wanted to highlight here in the patch updates right so if you look here you can see that you have the current column and the expected column in the current column right now what we have for expedition is 18 stamina right and then over here we have for expected it's going to cost 30 stamina for running this right here the expedition after the update now there's a couple of trade-offs for this in the past you got 80 to 60 points here or should I, guess I should say 60 to 80 based on private recruitment or open recruitment to fill up the expedition depot ladder 
This is obviously the thing that gets you your reforged materials. You get you your Mulligoras if you have the premium, uh, your gold transmit stones, the blue boxes, things of that nature. The stuff that you're running Expedition for, in addition to getting mod gems uh, and other things of that nature, right? Reforged materials. So yeah, you fill up the ladder quicker. But then when you scroll down here, right, we're going to move past the UI improvements. Yes, this makes it easier to list everything and send out friend invites. That's a great change. That was all discussed in Meta in Mail last week. Again, if you look here at the rewards for Expo, it gets a little concerning, right? So in the past, for your 18 stamina, you got five reforged mats on a clear. Now for your 30, you get nine. This is actually an improvement, but it's only like a very small improvement before it was like on average 0.28 or so uh, reforged materials, I believe, per one stamina spent. Now it is 0.3 reforged materials per stamina spent. And considering, well, it's not as easy to spam, you got almost two expeditions for the price of one in the past. Yes, sure, you get more re... Uh, reforged materials with the old, the uh, the newer system, but it's not that much. But now if you take a look at the Expedition Hunt Clear modification gems, you get one lesser and one greater, or I should say one lesser or one greater for clearing a level 3 for the cost of 18. Now, for the cost of 30, you get either two lessers, which if you haven't noticed, those are basically worthless to any endgame player, but you only get one greater modification gem for 30 spent. You get almost the same rate, I guess, for this. Like, you get basically almost your two for one to make up for the fact that it's almost twice as expensive. But greater modification gems is actually a loss. It's actually harder to farm modification gems under the new system. So that sucks, especially when you consider that you have to go through a whole hoopla of RNG to get the correct set, to get the correct substat, and then it's not even a guaranteed stat increase. So this actually, in my book, is pretty garbage. And they should really evaluate this and change this to 3x and 2x. Like, this really shouldn't be 2x and 1x, in my opinion. And then when you look at the Expedition Failed Rewards, before... You got 2,700 gold if for some reason, let's say you started it, you sent out the friend invites, and nobody cleared it, you got 27k gold. And that was actually a proper strategy for some people is to just list everything, yeet it into the wind with your friends, and if they don't clear it, fine, at least collect your 27k gold and your two reforge materials. Now... It's being changed to this of uh, the reforged materials being 4x and uh, 3,800. So obviously, uh, under the new system here, it's not quite as good on the fail reforged materials. That's not that big of a deal. But the gold, for some reason, is also uh, just worse. Before, it was 1,500 gold per stamina. Now, I believe it's like 1,260, 1,270 gold per stamina spent on a fail. So actually, just... You know, listing your expeditions and then not getting cleared yields you less rewards overall. So the new system, unless you're doing level three and you're actually clearing it and you're in the market for reforged mats, it's actually just a worse system overall. You get less gold, you get less mod gems, which is one of the main reasons to actually do expedition. And considering that the ladder fills up faster... Um, more people are going to be less inclined to farm it as the month goes on, which means your rate of failure might actually be a little bit less. So, uh, yeah, this is one of those ones where I don't think they crunch the numbers quite well. So, uh, yeah, not a big fan of some of these changes. Let me know, obviously, down in the comments below if I made a mistake or if you disagree or any of that. Would love to hear your thoughts on the expedition system because, well, Again, it's one of the main reasons I wanted to actually talk about this week's patch updates. So now we have uh, UX and uh, UI improvements, of which uh, this is one of the big areas. I'll probably talk about it in a later video. UI in this game, UI bloat in general, is pretty bad. I can't think of a game where I have to press more buttons 
to get to the thing I want to do than Epic 7. So they definitely need to do a lot in this regard. I just don't know if they're actually aware of it or not. So one of the most requested features now is the ability to teleport to the bosses in Nightmare Raid. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, we have a change to the Steel Workshop. Uh, Rift, that's actually, it says here, certain UI display methods in Rift will be adjusted. It doesn't change the fact that Rift is exactly the UI bloat I'm talking about. It actually is really slow to get into Rift, which I don't really like. It's several button presses. To get from Lobby into an actual Rift match is a, a bit too long, in my opinion. That's something they probably should adjust. We'll see how this goes because there's no specifics. Uh, you can see here before uh, the crafting screen looked like this. After, it looks like this. They've kind of flipped it, right? So now it's like the 85s are up top as opposed to needing to scroll down. Cool, I guess. Uh, epic craft mileage here, 14 times available. Okay, so it shows you where how much you have to go to epic craft mileage. Uh, this is very whatever for me. I'm, I'm good with just checking back here. Like between each craft, you're just looking here anyway on the left. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, they've also changed the UI for uh, the recommended section of the shop. Good change. But then you scroll down here and see what it is before, right? It's this list. And then after, if you can, you can you spot the difference? This is like literally the office beam. Like corporate wants you to spot the difference between the two pictures. They're the same picture. Cool. You added headers here. So you can see like new adventure, right? Uh, and then only once kind of thing. Uh, if you notice, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packs displayed on the old screen. One, two, three, four, five, six is displayed on the new screen. I get less information with the update than I do in the previous version. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like it is, it takes too many button presses and they just obfuscate things for no reason. So I'm sure this sounds really good on paper, like to tell you kind of what you're getting in the pack, but like. If I'm spending my hard-earned money anyway, I'm going to read the details of the pack and I'm going to look at the price. Like, I'm going to check each of the items anyway. I don't need you to tell me, like, oh, these are packs for new players. Again, if I'm spending real money, I'm reading the contents of everything anyways and I will make an informed decision as a consumer. So, uh, that that's kind of a waste. Um, new artifact here coming, and it's apparently tied to the web event. So please, if you're like me and you forget your web events, don't forget this one, especially if you're an artifact collector, because, well, you'll never be able to finish the artifact journal if you actually miss the thing. It's just another friendship, uh, increasing actual artifact, which means it's pretty good for farming unrecorded history. If you're trying to get some AP, you could just slap it on a character, uh, level up your character's friendship a bit, get some Molagoras back, get some skill levels. We have a million of these things, but still happy to see yet another one. So you could kind of uh, get more of these, right? Moving into the banners now, we have Tamarin. Don't roll for Tamarin or Chloe here. Yes, Tamarin, obviously one of the best pickups for a new player. If you don't have Tamarin, you definitely want to get Tamarin. But the thing is, Tamarin, her banner is available anytime through the side story summon. You can pick it up anytime you need it. And... Well, next week is probably Laia, who is probably a limited unit, in case you don't know. And to kind of further hammer the point home that she's probably a limited, who she's pop-up shop is also available after maintenance here with all of these rewards. And if you're newer to Epic 7, well, who she's pop-up shop being open is usually a pretty good indication that some kind of limited character is coming soon. Basically, this is a way for them to get you to spend what resources you're saving. So that, that way, when a limited comes out, you don't have any resources for it. So Tamarin here, uh, even though she's in the side story and you know really great character, really strong character for newer players, don't roll for her. You can get her anytime through the story. Someone you want to be saving for whatever the limited unit is, especially if it's a limited Tamarin. That is uh, anything akin to the power level of the regular Tamarin. So... Yeah, neither of these banners really worth it. Uh, coin shop renewal here at the bottom, uh, just as another like bone to pick with Smilegate and Super Creative on the state of this stuff. Uh, this actually is a system that really needs a refresh. Like having three covenants and three MLs per month, 
this does not cut it anymore in my book. After playing other games like Goddess of Victory Nikkei, where it's seven characters and it rotates weekly, it makes you start to question, why do I only see three characters per shop on a monthly basis? Like, it makes no sense. So a lot of people I know, myself included, are sitting on a lot of Galaxy Coins and... You can't really spend them. They just wait for almost an entire year for something they could actually use, which, again, it just generates a very negative sentiment uh, about this system. So I would like to see a refresh in it. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really make... Uh, there's not too much incentive for you to do it, but it still would be nice to think about that maybe we would get it. Uh, we have a Year of the Dragon Celebration pet pack, which... That, plus the pet adoption ticket pack, and the pet skill custom pack. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. Like, pets have always been, in my opinion, like, one of the worst features ever added to E7, and none of this really does anything for me. I guess if you're somebody who is a pet collector, you're gonna have to end up buying the Year of the Dragon Celebration pet pack, otherwise you're not gonna have full journal completion, because you'll have missed out on that dragon. Uh, pet skill selection chest... That's cool. This is a great item. It fixes one of the biggest problems with pet skills, but like it's tied to a paid pack. So why couldn't this have been something we earned from like side stories or expeditions or something? This would have been great. This fixes a lot of uh, people's uh, discontent towards the system and it's locked behind a paywall. So not happy to see this, not happy to see it behind a paywall, but it is what it is, right? Monthly Cattle Selection Pack, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here we go, actually. This is another thing I'm pretty excited about. So we're getting new music added to the music player in the form of the Ancient Inheritance stuff. This is the stuff you probably already heard a million times at this point if you were a veteran. But this stuff here, sweet start to the day, together sweets of music, getting closer bit by bit. These things are added during the Miracle Made Kingdom side story. And in case you haven't noticed, uh, the Episode 5 soundtrack is actually good. In Epic 7. I would say Epic 7 out of any gotcha game currently that is still being played on the market, right? Has the worst soundtrack. There, I said it. I think that Epic 7's OST is not particularly very good. Episode 5 soundtrack, I think, is solid. I would hesitate to call it good if you play, again, Goddess of Victory Nikkei or you play like Ark Knights. It's not even close. Even Honkai Star Rail... Music just absolutely trashes E7's OST. So I'm excited to see this because this is a music-themed event. And I'm hoping that they went pretty hard on these tracks. I'm really hoping to hear something that I wouldn't mind throwing in regular rotation in my playlist from when I'm just casually listening to music. Because very few songs, I feel like, in E7 make that list. Some of you have commented on my How to Play videos about how I use... Bloody Five Senses, which is Senya's boss theme uh, from episode three. That's one of the few good tracks you could find it in, like, Death Dealer Ray skill overview section. That's one of the few really good tracks in the game. But a lot of times when I'm looking for music for a video, there's a lot of misses in the E7's OST. And I'm hoping that these are actually hits. Uh, match history has been moved in uh, World Arena down to here, right? So that is really good. Uh, especially because, well, yeah, it's one of the most important features of World Arena, so you can look at what you did wrong in your drafts. So happy to see that. Uh, Tooltip being added here, so you can see what the obtainable main stats are for gear. Cool. This would have been great to know, like, ages ago. We're here, here in year five. Uh, this should have been here. I feel like probably from the beginning, other games have had this for quite some time. And that's going to do it for the February 1st update. What are you most looking forward to? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm really hoping that Miracle Made Kingdom delivers. We really need some kind of PvE content to hit. And again, like I said, I'm super excited for the music. Uh, and hopefully by bringing some attention to some of the things in this video, we can get a couple things like maybe the expedition stuff changed and the UI later on in the future. If you want to see me do a video detailing what I think specifically is wrong with the UI, again, let me know all that stuff down in those comments sections. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one now.